all remember the gospel story, uh, you know, where Jesus said something and, 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 the, and the whole point of the parable was, if you don't like what you hear, then attack it. Attack it hard and loud, and especially on social media, if you get a chance. Right? No, actually quite the opposite. That's what this gospel is pointing out. Right? Don't forget, this, this is just the next set of verses from last week. Right? This is not like, you know, meanwhile, back in the hall of justice, this is right the next verses from last week. Peter, you are the rock. On the rock I shall build the church, and the gates of the netherworld will not prevail against it, Satan. <laughs> it's just four verses later. What happened? What happened? And, and then Jesus just pounds it down lovingly. Hey, you got to deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. Are you upset? Let me make it more. You trying to save your life? You've already lost. <laughs> but if you give it up for my sake, nobody can take it from you. It just... What about us? Where Peter stuck is in his way. I always say, you know, we're made in the image and likeness of God, and that's beautiful in many ways, but it is always a balance. We can be God-like. We can do things that, that remind others of God's love and mercy. When we forgive people, people experience our, that we're God-like in that moment. But rooted in there, of course, is we're pretty sure our way is the best way to do it. And this is just one of those examples where Jesus is going, this is the way. I will be a suffering servant. And Peter says, over my dead body, you will. Right? He could not have been more strong in this moment. No, 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 that's not going to happen. It's his way. He wants, he's not going to consider another way. How do you just 20 minutes ago say, you are the Christ? And then go, yeah, but you can't be a Christ other than how I see it. I mean, the arrogance, right? The arrogance. It's got to be my way. And that's why Jesus uses that word. Satan, get behind me, Satan. That's, that's not God's way. That's, that's human's way. Look, I don't know why this is the way, but it is the way. And the first thing it should teach us is that God with us is relational. <laughs> There's no reason to come to earth if God wasn't striving to be in relationship with us. And then again, showing us how to live, showing us how to love, showing us how to die and not be afraid of death, and not just physical death, but many deaths along the way. And, and it's interesting because Peter got the head question right. He got the heart question wrong. He couldn't surrender his heart. He had to go back to his head. And if you're only going to get one right, I think Jesus would say, get the heart one right. Be a person of empathy. Assume the best. I've made this homily a few times about in the New Testament. Father Ron Rollheiser makes this catechetical, exegetical point. There are two names for the devil that are used in New Testament. Diabolos in Greek. Diabolos, which is the divider, pulls us apart. And satanas, which is what's used today. I double-checked with chat GPT. As I was shaving this morning, I'm like, wait, which is it? And I've got a Greek concordance, but I didn't have time for it. So I just hit the button like, hey... In Matthew 16, 21 to 27, Jesus calls Peter Satan. Which Greek word? Chat GPT did not let me down. Satanas, thank you. Satanas is the opposite. It, it looks for sickness and it brings it together. Right? Diabolos pulls apart, divides, disintegrates us as the body of Christ. Satanus brings us together. It's, it's the angry mob screaming, crucify him. And why is the mob angry? Really, because they're afraid. They're fearful. And I think that's Peter. Peter's like, you're the Christ. This is awesome. We're going to do great things. <laughs> Jesus goes, oh, they're gonna, I'm going to get handed over. They're going to beat me, crucify me. No, I can't handle that. I'm too afraid of that. Therefore, it won't happen. And what Peter's really doing is trying to bring together people who are also afraid of that so that they'll have strength in numbers. And Jesus shuts it down 
as quickly as he can. See, the difference here is, Pope Francis made this point, I think it was a book he wrote last year on happiness, and he said, look, I want you to go against the current, but you should never be going against other people, right? There's a big difference in saying I'm countercultural and I'm actually working against other people. And it's such a small step from one to the other. But when people get focused on factions, who's with me, who's against me, that's, that's the work of the dark side. Not that we don't look for supporters, right? But if out of fear what we're doing is deciding if you're with me or against me, then we start heading into this mob that heads off. And it's, it's very sick. It's not healthy in the deepest sense. And that's what Jesus is calling out and what Peter said. He's not really calling him Satan, obviously. But he's acknowledging that what he just said is an example. It's really a foreshadow of what is to come when I do offer myself. People who just days earlier were celebrating my arrival are calling for my destruction. Why? Out of fear. And so what we want to motivate us, that we do want to be countercultural, that we do want to call out in our culture, both people that say, it doesn't really matter what you do, kind of this relativism, a cultural relativism, you know, there's no responsibility, you're not capable of being responsible. We want to speak out against that kind of thinking, but we also want to speak out against the thinking that is more <clears throat> based in conspiracy or, or victim and blame and shame and all those things that are done out of fear. There, there it is. Did you see it? It was right there just now. <laughs> and you go, what are you talking about? That what we want to be, as Jesus would say, is an ambassador of happiness, true happiness, not, not naive pie in the sky. Because I'm saying that's where Peter, rather than just sit with the difficult thing that Jesus just told him, he gonna, he's going to smash it down right now. And in turn, Jesus said, no, it can't be that way. Indeed, if your fear is driven by that, I've got to protect myself. That's why he said, wow, if your goal here is to save yourself, you've already lost. I can't even help you. I'm the son of God, and I can't help you. You have to be able to let go of that. Brothers and sisters, that is hard. That is hard to do, and it only happens through daily practice, the little yeses, saying yes to God in little ways, following God in little ways, dying to self in little ways, so that it can happen in big ways. When Mary said yes to the angel, that was not her first yes to God. There's no way. There's no way it was her first yes. She had to have practiced many little yeses to get to the point that she just said, bring it on. <laughs> Be it done unto me according to your will. That could not have been her first yes to God. It just couldn't. And so we are here today to hear that in his word, to receive him in this Eucharist, to say, Lord, strengthen me to not be a person of fear. Strengthen me to be an ambassador of love and mercy, that what I'm communicating to people, even when I've got a little fear within me, is that I believe in you. You conquered sin and death, and I have a joy in that, even when I don't know exactly where we're going. Right? There's Peter with, when Jesus gives the Eucharistic story. You guys leaving too? What? No. <laughs> Where would we go? So take whatever it is in your life today, all the tumult, all the concern, all the upside down, and just say, Lord, I'm going to hand that back over to you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe that you have what's best for me in store and in the future. I will follow you. And I'm going to let the fear, I'm going to keep laying it down, setting it down. Practice letting go of the fear, because when we hold on to the fear, Satanas is doing a dance, loving it. Doesn't need us to actually work against God because that simple thing of just gripping onto our fear will accomplish the same thing. And that's not where we want to be, or we wouldn't be here today, amen? We wouldn't be here today if, if the, what we were driving for wasn't, God, I want to love you more, follow you better, and, and serve my brothers and sisters. So that's what he said to us, to us today in the word of God. And we prepare ourselves to receive his presence in this Eucharist, the real presence of Christ that will strengthen us 
to be more hopeful, more merciful, more joyful, because the world is already full of fear and factions and blaming and conspiracies and all that kind of stuff. And if that was going to do good stuff, it would have done it by now. The thing that works is the way, his way. Let us follow him a little more faithfully today. May God be praised.